What if I told you this weekend you could skip weeks worth of site analysis research with just one powerful browser-based tool? And what if I also told you this tool is completely free to try and better yet, you could win $3,000 just by trying it. It sounds too good to be true, right? Well, no, this is an incredibly exciting opportunity and it's thanks to Autodesk Forma, the sponsor of today's video. If Autodesk Forma is new to you, don't worry. Last year's competition winner hadn't heard of it either. Autodesk Forma is a cloud-based software that offers powerful yet easy to use AI-powered tools for pre-design and schematic design. It provides architects and designers with instant real-world data on essential factors like sun exposure, shade, wind patterns, embodied carbon, and even noise levels. By the end of this video, you'll hopefully be $3,000 richer, but you'll also learn how to get started with Autodesk Forma, how to set up your design projects, run detailed site analysis, edit and prepare your submission video, and of course, submit your entry for a chance to win. Are you ready? Let's go. Let's dive into exactly how you can start your own Forma journey and win $3,000 this weekend. First of all, all you need to do is go to any search platform and just simply search for Autodesk Forma. It's most likely gonna be the first thing that comes up. So just go ahead, click on Autodesk Forma and you'll land on the main Autodesk Forma page. As you can see, there is a free trial available to anyone. Trial accounts are eligible to win as well. If you already have an AEC collection bundle, Autodesk Forma is now included in your package. So you can skip the trial, go right ahead and log in. Either way, you'll land on the main home screen. The Autodesk Forma homepage will look very, very similar to this. Now, this is my Autodesk Forma page that I've been playing around on for a little while now, and yours will look very similar. To enter this competition, in the bottom right-hand corner, you'll see Join Our Competition, and we just click Get Started. Once the demo project is loaded, it's going to look a little bit something like this. Now, it's pre-populated, ready to go with buildings, roads, vegetation, and everything in between. The software itself is all browser-based, really, really simple to use. You're basically just using your mouse most of the time. For anything that you do need to use the keyboard for, pretty much pressing enter or escape. Now, what you'll see is our site is this red outlined area on the map. It is unfortunately being cut with a freeway but that gives us the ability to create some unique and interesting designs and proposals. If you've never used Autodesk Formula before, a quick rundown. On the left-hand side, you'll see your proposals, your library, your extensions, and of course your project members if you wish to invite other people to your team. On the right-hand side, you'll see everything you need to create your massing and your modeling. Everything is very, very self-explanatory. You can simply hover over anything and it will tell you exactly what it is. Further on the right, you'll have your analyses tools up the top. You have your area metrics, which are gonna be super important for complying with the rules of this competition. And of course, you have some basic UI options down at the bottom as well. One of the easiest and best tools is simply switching between 2D and 3D to be able to model on the floor plan better and quicker. To commence modeling, for example, all you'd have to do is come up to a building. You could either go to a basic building or a line building. So let's go basic building for instance, and we could simply draw a massive, massive box that is horrendous, will not perform well, lift it all the way up as high as we want, and there we go. We have this astronomically terrible building but it is that simple to create and edit. If we wanted to adjust anything within our building, we can select the whole building, for instance, go to function and change that to commercial. Once we've changed that to buildings commercial, it will still look like a plain white box if we don't come down to display options and change our building colors to functions. Now that entire building will turn purple because that's the color assigned with commercial. If we wanted to go through and select a particular floor or potentially even highlight a series of floors, and then change their function to residential, we'll see the format of that building changes. We can instantly identify what our residential portions are, what our commercial portions are, and then if we select the entire building, go to our site areas, we can quickly identify the total square footage of the building. Again, super important for the design competition regulations. Speaking of rules and regulations, let's dive into them just quickly. So this is the official Autodesk Forma Design Contest entry page. And as you can see at the moment, we only have one entry. However, the same thing happened last year. And at the very last minute, we had 26 entries. 
Now, this isn't recommended and I'd suggest you go ahead, create your designs and submit straight away because as you can see, we're definitely running out of time. September the 30th is creeping up on us very, very, very quickly. So let's go ahead, complete our projects and submit as soon as we can. This page will give you all the information you need and I'll leave a link down in the description below so you can enter and check it out. To summarize, it's really basic. You have to use demo project provided. Your proposal has to be between 3 million square feet and 4.5 million square feet. For those of you in Australia who need to do the maths like me, that's 280,000 square meters or 450,000 square meters maximum. The program itself is also defined. 10% commercial, 20% offices, 30% hospitality, and 40% residential. I'll break down those numbers. I'll put them on the screen now in both square feet and square meters so that you can understand the targets you're aiming for. Of course, the proposal has to also include one conceptually strong landmark building. Once you've created your design proposal, you can go ahead and create a two to three minute screen recording with a voiceover, no fancy editing, you can't do anything like this video. It just has to be a screen recording. You can cut the video, you can speed it up, and you can introduce a voiceover, but that's it. And after that, you can submit your entry. Now, this very informal submission is a guide to help you understand how to create your own videos. In this scenario, we've started off with a very blank and large canvas. Of course, that large canvas could be absolutely anything, but it is still a large canvas in a particular unique environment. So the first thing that is incredibly helpful for anybody starting out a new project is to analyze the site in itself. So a sunlight hours analysis has been done on this site through Forma and what you can see is because it is such a large site that is relatively unpopulated by the neighboring buildings, we have maximum solar exposure, which at the same time means we have maximum wind. We have all the problems that are occurring with a vacant area of land. Our intention is not to cast additional shadows and additional shade onto the natural vegetation as to not kill the trees and also to prevent any additional negative influence on the neighboring buildings. So if we were to go ahead and throw in a first proposal, what we would see is some very, very, very basic generic massing. This massing provides us with multiple areas on the site, each positioned in a strategic way as to not impact neighbors or the vegetation around. Now, as you can see, we have run a solar analysis on this as well. And the solar analysis is telling us immediate information based on our model. First of all, it's a terrible design. It is not going to function well in reality. As you can see by the sliding color scale here at the bottom, 
Between these two buildings, we have a number of dark areas that aren't going to receive a lot of sunlight throughout the day, including multiple dead patches below this building spanning between the building below. The only positive from this design here is we're not actually impacting our neighbors and we're not impacting our surroundings too much either. Nonetheless, it isn't the best. This solar information paired with daylight potential and of course wind microclimate and noise gives us enough information to move on to proposal 2. Proposal 2 takes away a lot of the solid massing, moves some elements around and utilizes the land better. If we then compare side by side our massing of proposal 1 on the left and proposal 2 on the right, you'll see that we've been immediately able to remove this negative bridge space on the left hand side and now our building is relatively open and exposed which provides more natural light throughout the day. We are still left with a number of dark patches including underneath this tower and to the rear of the building. However, if we look at a previous revision of that same proposal too, we can see by simply rerunning the same solar analyses, we can take out additional features. So for instance, this bridge was casting an incredibly large shadow onto the back of this tower. Whereas once it's been removed, all of that negative consequence from those shadows are removed. At the same time, we can review things like our daylight potential, where we have significantly improved through the use of data in Former's incredible analysis tools. From major tweaks to minor tweaks, each individual space is going to allow you to create a better model, a better building, and overall a better environment for the end user. Once you've finished creating your massing, analyze the site multiple times over, readjusted, adjusted, introduced buildings, introduced vegetation into your models, potentially played with the generic massing, modeling, or even the 3D sketches, we can then go ahead and create our screen recording and our voiceover. Ideally, you'd script out some form of narrative for your screen recording that will make it easier for you to go through the design, picking out the best points required. Nonetheless, for the purpose of this, I've gone ahead and created a screen recording, and what we're going to do now is jump in to Premiere Pro. You can use any editing software, it's just the one I use. What we want to do is drag and drop our screen recording into Premiere Pro, put that on the timeline, adjust it to suit, and then start cutting sequences away. So by using the cut tool, we can go through skim what's important, skim what's not important, cut out the extra bits, delete what we don't find useful, readjust of course, making sure our final video is over two minutes but under three minutes, introduce our audio over the top, cut out all the extra pieces, and then we can export our video. What's going on team? This is a sample delivery for the Autodesk former design competition, including generic massing, data analysis, and results comparison with of course an edited video. Autodesk Former is a powerful tool that allows us to integrate various data points to inform our design decisions. This means we can rely on precise real-time data to shape our projects, ensuring they meet both environmental and users' needs. Let's start with analyzing the existing site and its context, which in this demo project is all done for us. Using Former's tools, we can review a wide range of data from solar to wind daylight potential to microclimates. This helps us understand the unique characteristics and constraints of the site before we begin designing. We create massing models that incorporate residential, commercial, hospitality, and office spaces. This step allows us to explore different design options and their impacts on the site. With the massing models in place, we can then add landscaping elements with just a few clicks. Former's tools enable us to design green spaces that complement the built environment and enhance the overall aesthetics and function. Now we can move on to what we're here for. We can move on to analyzing the data. This data is crucial for making informed adjustments to our models. Based on our analysis, we can adjust and optimize our model. For example, we can see that this bridge has created unwanted shading on the neighboring buildings. We can also see that the noise situation is creating undesirable effects which would decrease the livability of the area. After making adjustments, we can reanalyze the data to ensure our changes have made the desired effects. This intuitive process allows us to refine our designs continually. Even minor adjustments like removing this secondary bridge which creates excessive shading on one of the residential towers can dramatically change the livability of that tower. In the end, Autodesk Former helps us create designs that are not only visually stunning, but also deeply responsive to their context and the needs of the people who will use them. This is the future of architecture, data-driven, precise, and always evolving. Once we're completed, we can go back to the Former contest entry, go into entries, submit our entry, introduce our project title, our details, 
drag and drop our file in and we can either be emailed a notification when somebody leaves a comment or not. Create your contest labels, agree, agree, and then hit the post button when you're ready. Anyway, that is all for me team. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you had enough time left in your weekend to go out, grab a haircut, enjoy the beautiful weather, spend some time with your friends, of course, and prepare for the week ahead. If you enjoyed the video, smash the subscribe button down below and like always, I'll see you next week.